Tonight we feature Kenyan industrialist and tycoon Naushad Nurali Merali. Now Merali's business acumen has earned him the name Seer of Samir due to his ability to predict and buy into and sell uh, business ventures. He is listed by Forbes magazine as one of the richest men in Africa, ranked at number 39 on Africa's top 40 richest people. Now, born in Kenya in 1951, Merali traces his African roots back to his great-grandfather, a cotton and spice trader who moved from India to settle on the coast of Kenya in the late 1800s. Now, he spent some of his younger years in Moshi, Tanzania, before moving back to Kenya, where he went to Highway Secondary School. Merali worked as a chartered accountant in the UK for a period before returning to Kenya to engage in business in the early 70s. Now, he's best known for what many describe as a business coup and the deal of a lifetime. This was the Kensel to Celtel buyout of 2004. This is how the story goes. While on pilgrimage to Mecca in December 2003, Merali received a call informing him that his partners in the company, Vivendi, intended to sell their 60% stake to South African telecom giant, MTN. In March 2004, he was informed the deal had been signed for 230 million US dollars and information had already been leaked to the South African press. However, he was uncomfortable with the idea of partnering with MTN and immediately contacted an old friend of his who was working on building an African network. He reached out to billionaire Mo Ibrahim of Celtel. And so it came to be that at 7 p.m. on a quiet Monday evening in Nairobi, Merali met with Vivendi and leveraged his preemptive rights to buy their 60% stake in Kensel for 230 million US dollars. In a room just a few steps away was the Celtel team led by Mo Ibrahim. Now on closing the Vivendi deal, Merali simply walked across to the Celtel team just before 9 p.m. The deal with Celtel was finalized. He sold the 60% stake to Celtel for $250 million. A massive $20 million was secured in less than two hours. Now, in case you were wondering, that works out at 18.4 billion shillings using the 80 shilling to the dollar exchange rate of the day. Now, while that's his most celebrated deal to date, Merali was no newcomer to the art of leverage, business savvy, and opportunistic acquisition. Way back in 1975, he engineered a buyout of Rice Motors. In 1983, he founded Equatorial Commercial Bank. In 1984, he led a consortium of local investors in the buyout of the Commercial Bank of Africa from Bank of America, along with the Kenyatta family. In 1985, he secured the Firestone US stake in Firestone East Africa, quickly building an industry around the venture, today known as Yana Tires. In 1987, he bought out First American Bank of Kenya from First American Bank of Chicago. Now, in a lesser known deal, Mirali secured East African cable cables from UK's Delta Group PLC in the year 2000. They sold their 75% stake at six shillings, 80 cents per share, working out to 104 million shillings. Four years later, he, in 2004, he sold that 75% stake to a group of investors at double the price, more than double the price. He negotiated 15 shillings per share, working out to 230 million shillings, earning him an impressive profit of 126 million shillings. But you know, it's not all about success. There's also plenty of struggle on this journey. Currently, Merali is embroiled in controversy through a suit filed by a former CEO of Equatorial Commercial Bank, Peter Harris, where he's accused of contravening Central Bank of Kenya rules by holding a staggering 85% in the bank in violation of the statutory requirement of a 25% maximum shareholding for individuals and non-banking institutions. Now, insiders tell us the bank hopes to address this issue by the end of 2013, but has until 2014 to comply or face a loss of their license. So as you can see, Merali retains interest in numerous companies across numerous industries and sectors from banking, financial services and IT, to energy, agriculture and real estate. He's been associated with Sassini Tea and Coffee, 
Ed Veredi Batteries, H. Young & Company, and Yam Sam Motors, among other companies. He recently sold significant interest in IT firms KDN and Swift Global to UK firm Liquid Telcoms, and he currently retains a 5% shareholding in Bati Airtel Kenya. Now, there are those who attribute Morali's success to connections with the political elite, an assertion that he refutes. So, what is the estimated net worth of the group executive chairman and CEO of the Samir group of companies. It currently stands at a whopping 35 billion Kenya shillings. And with that impressive figure, we close this segment with an equally impressive quote. Let's have the quote on the screen. And the quote reads, entrepreneurs are simply those who understand that there is little difference between obstacle and opportunity and are able to turn both to their advantage. Those are the words of Niccolo Machiavelli.